Hi, Dave Sobel here, host of the Business of Tech podcast, a second video before the holiday break to update on the SolarWinds story and acknowledging that SolarWinds hack is the name even as the scope expands. Krebs on Security reported that according to its sources, a flaw in VMware's Workspace ONE was being used to access protected data and break authentication. VMware, however, has disputed those findings, indicating that the zero-day exploit that the NSA reported was not used as an additional attack vector. Additionally, Reuters is reporting that Cox Communications and the local government in Prima County, Arizona, can be added to the list of intrusions, along with the U.S. Nuclear Weapons Agency. Reuters is also reporting that a second, different hacking team also targeted SolarWinds products in an effort known as Supernova, which is a piece of malware that imitates Orion but is not digitally signed like the other attack, which suggests that the second group did not have access to the internal systems of SolarWinds. This reporting also indicated that Cisco was targeted as well, although the company indicates that while internal research machines were compromised, there is no known impact to Cisco offers or products. Datto is offering a free scanner for MSPs to search networks for stolen FireEye tools, which is available to be used with any RMM platform. Several government agencies are clarifying that SolarWinds wasn't used on networks carrying classified data only on unclassified ones. The Energy Department specifically clarifies that only the business networks were impacted and not impacted the mission essential national security functions of the department, including National Nuclear Security Administration. VMware did then confirm its systems had been breached by the attacks, but also disputed any of its products were used as additional attack vectors. Researchers have also shared a list of organizations where threat actors have deployed the Sunburst slash SolarGate malware, which includes Intel, NVIDIA, Cisco, and Belkin. Local coverage of the SolarWinds hack has started as journalists indicate if the bigger story impacts their regions. Two examples of that. Michigan has reported indicating that investigations show no sign of breach, while the city of Atlanta has refused to answer if it was impacted. In vendor news, Qualys is offering a free vulnerability management service following the breach for 60 days. Bloomberg is reporting two former SolarWinds employees, one anonymously and one on record, as having said they warned the company several years ago about security concerns. Meanwhile, the Government Accounting Office is indicating that of the 23 federal agencies they've audited for a new report, only a handful have implemented seven foundational practices for managing security risks in their supply chain. For those interested in technical details, Dark Reading has some additional details, noting that it does appear other attack vectors were used and that the SolarWinds hack may have been present for longer than initially reported. I've also included a link to the full Microsoft research data on the exploit for those who want those technical details. And while we're on the topic, the final one, a counterpoint, which is a very good read, is in SC Magazine in a piece called The SolarWinds Hack and the Danger of Arrogance, which I will encourage listeners to read. Now, why do we care? I'll start with the name. The SolarWinds hack is sticking as a name, and that's bad for the company's brand. This one is so high profile, and their name is now front and center for a company who was virtually hidden before. That said, the fact that the scope is expanding shows just how critical this whole discussion will be. A number of years ago, I predicted there would be a wake-up event. This well could be it. The software and IT worlds have tolerated a pretty lax and weak approach to security, in some cases as an afterthought. We've already seen calls for more from industry and government as this aftermath rolls on. Before this incident, there was recognition that regulation was coming. This just adds fuel and very deep government pockets to that fire. Experts are clarifying the difference between espionage and an act of war. That's notable to me and something we want to focus on. But let's talk about appearances during a crisis. I think denial is a really bad look. Refusing to answer is never good and just screams, it happened to us and we're not courageous enough to own it. 
I'd also question, here's a longer trial of our competitive product as positioning too exploitative of a situation rather than really helping. Other vendors have offered tools with no strings, which is a much more collaborative approach. Those CEOs who are taking pot shots are just putting a target on their back, and in the inevitable time they're hacked, they just look worse. On former employees, I'm reasonably confident I could find a former employee at any company that will say something about their former leadership to paint them in a bad light. I question the value of putting out information from three years ago to try and do a victory lap of, I told you so, particularly when you leak to the press work you did as an employee, and thus is the intellectual property of the company. That just leads to more open questions about ethics and handling of critical confidential information, particularly when you're the security expert. Add to that the fact that all the federal agencies were not in a good defensive posture, it just ends up being a really bad look for those exploiting this. And that kind of stink stays with you. People remember grace, too. Which leads to that SC perspective and the power that comes from humility. This is a moment to define yours and the industry's approach. One path seems obvious to me and the other fraught with opportunism, which is never a good long-term sustainable answer. Finally, some insights I haven't offered on the podcast yet, but I wanted to offer for some projection on what could and should happen for SolarWinds, particularly as I've been asked by a number of investors lately. No reason listeners shouldn't get these same insights. Note, I'm a shareholder dating back to my employment, which ended in October of 2019. I'm well beyond my separation paperwork. I fully expect the MSP division to spin off. That was full speed ahead before this. And there's going to be desire to spin out the brand to move away from the PR fallout. With the PR headline, Solar Winds Hack, out there in history forever, the MSP group is ready to move forward. A recent job posting on LinkedIn indicates they plan to complete this in Q1 2021. That will happen. That's my prediction. Now, on to SolarWinds itself. It really has a Tylenol moment opportunity here. If you remember the recall of the product in 1982, when seven people died from taking cyanide-laced caplets of the product, Johnson & Johnson, in what is now considered the hallmark for crisis handling, recalled 31 million bottles from the stores and offered replacements in the new safer tablet form free of charge. This was groundbreaking. No one ever recalled products before then. Huge expense, but shareholders were only hurt briefly. It moved record to record highs just two months later. On January 4th, 2021, the new SolarWinds CEO takes over. He comes from the security space, having led Pulse Secure since 2015. The CIO and CTO positions at SolarWinds were vacated prior to this incident in what appears to be the normal leadership transition. The company was highly profitable before, per its SEC filings. And thus the opportunity. Go big. New leadership can t make a huge, massive overcorrection here. There is a reason the product was in so many federal agencies and so many of the Fortune 500. It solved a pain point at a cost-effective price against its competition, of which it clearly found the balance of price point to feature set. Thus, spend big overcorrect huge. Microsoft moved on trustworthy computing and they benefited over time. That's the opportunity here. Sure, short-term hit, but long-term market dominance maintained. This is harder than Johnson & Johnson's problem, but it's the same problem, a supply chain fault. So fix it the same way. Go big. Because quite frankly, the industry really needs the help. 
Thanks for listening. I'll see you every day on the Business of Tech podcast. My 2021 prediction series comes out right after the holidays. Talk to you soon.